Certainly, anecdotally, a lot of my friends are saying that at the moment they're struggling to sleep. I myself am struggling to sleep. Is that what you've heard as well? Yes, I have heard a bit of that. I've actually heard some mixed messages. So, um, and I think there's quite a few factors that might be involved in that. So, one is obviously that there's um, a, there's a fair amount of stress going on um, with the coronavirus, and people having to adjust to working from home, working with kids, um, the uncertainty of how long it's going on, concern about their loved ones, concerned about their own health, and, and little things like shopping for food has become quite stressful um, and so when people are going through a stressful time or a period of uncertainty or a period of change it's very normal to have sleep problems so it's not it's not that people have a problem with their sleep it's really that they are responding to that stress and and um, so it's important to sort of normalize that the sleep issues are, are not abnormal um, they are just a response to to the time um, which is which is sort of quite stressful involves a bit of change um, so that's probably the main reason and it's probably built up a little bit over the last few weeks the, the, there's also a number of um, changes that people are probably making because they're stuck at home and they're working from home and those those factors will also influence people's ability to sleep so we're spending a lot more time inside generally i think um you know people are hopefully getting out to exercise a bit but um the problem with spending time inside is that you have um, reduced light exposure and your your circadian rhythm depends on on light um, to keep it healthy um, and and if you're in constant light all day in artificial light inside that's that's a bit confusing for your circadian rhythm um, and it can potentially lead to some sleep problems so that's one factor that might be influencing what's going on and really the advice over that is to try and get outside for at least 30 minutes but preferably 60 minutes in the morning so you want good strong um, light in the first third to half of your day um, and and the best light you can get even on a cloudy day is outside so that would be the advice um, around that um, and then when you're inside in the morning keep the lights on keep your lights bright so you want nice bright um, light environment in the first sort of half of your day and then in the afternoon and certainly in the evening you want that to tell off so you sort of want to you want to copy the light of the sunlight um, and uh, start dimming your lights um, late afternoon and in the evening use your dimmers use side lights and definitely put put those screens away um, phones and devices so that's the other thing that's going on is I think people are spending a lot more time on their devices checking social media trying to stay in contact with friends and family um, and and if that's going on into the evening that potentially could have an impact on people's sleep so not just because of the the light um, in the evening so if you have if you have a lot of light in the evening it suppresses melatonin which is the hormone that that regulates your circadian rhythm um, so um, there might be that going on but also those activities are quite stimulating for your brain and so you go to bed and you, you're sort of feeling quite wide awake because you've been sort of doing these things that are quite stimulating um, so it's really important to have a wind down relaxation period in the hour or two before bed when maybe you switch off those devices you switch off the phone and you do something that winds you down whatever that is for you um, but it needs to be something that slows you down mentally and physically so that might be reading might be watching tv and watching tv is okay if it's on a tv that's you know a couple of meters it's across the room but you don't want to be watching tv on a device that's really close to your face like an ipad or a computer mm -hmm. Um, so there's a couple of things, but also um, I get the sense people are drinking a bit more alcohol um, and that can disrupt your sleep. Um, so watching out for that. So what happens with alcohol is is it, it sometimes people find it helpful because it actually sends you into deep sleep. So it's a bit of a sedative, but then it tends to disrupt your sleep later on. So you find that after a certain period of time, three or four hours, you wake up and, and, and uh, you're awake for a while, you're a bit thirsty and dehydrated and you're popping in and out of sleep and it's not very restful in that second half. So um, watching out for that because it changes the type of sleep you get and you can wake up feeling a bit groggy. I'm sure a lot of us are guilty of some of those things you've said. One thing that I do, which is probably not a good idea then, is if I wake up in the night, I'll get out my phone and have yeah. a look at it. So that's probably a terrible idea, isn't it? 
Yeah, so if you wake in the night, and, and waking in the night is, is quite a normal behaviour, um, but ideally you want to be getting back to sleep within a reasonable amount of time. But during periods of stress, you might find that that's, that's not so easy. Um, and so the things you're right, things to avoid is you, you, you don't want that light um, you don't want that light input. So any light is is sent um, from your eyes to an area in your brain um, that the, the the sort of master clock of your brain, um, where the sort of seat of the circadian rhythm is 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 in the brain and the hypothalamus. So any any light in the night is not very helpful. So you want to, um, if possible, just switch your phone off and not put it on in the middle of the night. Don't check the clock either, because if you check the clock, what tends to happen? What sort of goes through your head if you Check the, check the time yeah you get stressed and think oh I'm not asleep it's three o'clock yeah. I've only had a few hours sleep I need to go back to sleep <laughs> absolutely so those thoughts are really unhelpful because they lead to a bit of an anxiety response so and think about what difference does it make if it's three or four you know you may as well not look at the clock because you've got Gosh. more chance of getting back to sleep I'd find that so hard to do it is hard to do it is hard to do but one way you do it is if you if you actually turn your phone off and put it out of the room or actually take the clocks out of the room but you need some way that you're going to wake up mm. but some some of my clients um they they put their alarm outside the door um so that then they're not looking at the clock in the night but also when it goes off they have to get out of bed yeah, um, yeah. and that's quite that's quite helpful because if you just have it by your bed you put it on snooze and then you might be doing that for a while and that's another slightly unhealthy behavior is hitting that snooze button constantly you want to you want to set your alarm for the time when you need to get up and if that's 10 minutes later so so you're incorporating the time you would snooze then do that think about what's the point i need to get up and then just get up start your day okay so so the main things then are um, yeah. have regular times that you go to bed and get up even though we might not have those regular times in our days at the moment yes. and avoid looking at screens just before you go to bed and during the night yes and getting that light in the morning yeah. so the light is really important so trying to get some time outside in the morning and trying to put on the bright lights so if you're working at home a good idea um so i'm working at home and i've put my desk in 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 the bay window in my sitting room so um when i'm not outside i, I at least get the light um you know a nice bright bright light um in my working environment and then kind and of then dim those, those during the day as the day goes yeah on. yeah and, and I guess the other thing is just, um, you know, normalizing the, the sleep, you know, when you're under a bit of stress, understanding that's just how your body responds and to try and really manage that stress, I guess, rather than worrying about the sleep, which will just make things worse. Mm. Focus on on actually trying to manage the stress and, and finding day uh, time in the day to, to, to maybe pause and stop and um, just give you that, that break. Um, so anything you can do to sort of manage that stress is a good idea as well. What about napping? Yeah, so napping, there's a lot of debate about napping, about whether it's helpful or not helpful. Um, and if you're not struggling to sleep at night, by all means, have a brief nap. You know, that, that's, that's absolutely fine and, and can be quite beneficial, particularly if you are sleep deprived, if you maybe you haven't got enough sleep. And when I say sleep deprived, I don't mean that you're struggling to sleep. I mean, you're not giving yourself enough opportunity to sleep, okay. which is different to insomnia. Um, so if you're able to have a, a brief nap in the day, and the, the advice is to keep it brief, so sort of 10 to 20 minutes. Oh gosh, really as short as that? Yeah, so a brief power nap, um, and then um, also not too late in the day, so before two o'clock, um, probably um, three o'clock sort of later it depends on when you go to bed um, but so that can be beneficial but if you're finding you can't sleep at night you probably want to cut out those naps even though you might feel like you need one um, and definitely don't have long naps because if you have long naps in the day that go go on for say an hour or um, you know more than half an hour what happens is you'll go into your deep sleep um, and you'll get that quota of deep sleep which means you will get less at night mm. so it's it's one of those behaviours that um, it, if you're struggling to sleep at night, it can be problematic because it gives you short term relief. So you sort of keep doing it. But in the long term, it can maintain the problem. I love a nap. <laughs> well, yeah. But where where should you nap? 
should you actually go to bed or just like just lie on the sofa or something so um that's a really good question um because it throws up this idea of um what you associate with sleep and you want to associate your bedroom with sleep and your bed with sleep as much as possible. Keep that association strong. So this is a bit like Pavlov's dogs, uh, the experiment where um, Pavlov um, showed a dog some food and the dog would obviously salivate um, and he paired the, the food with the sound of a ringing bell and eventually the dog would salivate just to the sound of the bell. Now we do that as well, it's a way of learning. Um, and um, what ideally we would like is to associate the bedroom and bedtime with, with going to sleep and the, and the sort of processes that are involved in going to sleep. Um, so the parasympathetic nervous system, that can kick in. Um, so we want to associate it with, with the bedroom, with a place of rest and a place of sleep. Um, now, if you're sleeping in lots of different places, that might weaken the association a little bit. Um, so, so it, it's a it's a tricky one because when I when I work with clients, I generally say let's cut out the napping, and that's that's how it is because they're struggling to sleep at night. So it's uh, um, and then in the evening they might say, well, I find myself falling asleep in front of the sofa, um, and I'd say, well, that's actually a nap. So don't do that. And if you're finding that you're doing that, then either take yourself to bed or if, it, if it's not your sort of allocated bedtime, because you have to be a little bit strict with bedtimes with insomnia, then you might want to just get up, walk around and wake yourself up a bit. OK, so 10 to 20 minute nap and I guess set an alarm then so, so that you make sure you yeah. wake up. Yeah, and another little trick is if you want is is you can um, if it's not too late in the day again you can have a, a bit of caffeine before you go to sleep before you nap and then it won't kick in for about twenty minutes so then when you wake up you, you sort of um, have that that help from the caffeine but you don't want caffeine too late in the day so yeah. um, but again you don't want your naps too late in the day either so one thing I was thinking is that you know there is obviously a lot of anxiety around at the moment isn't there and you know, not sleeping can make you a bit grumpy the next day. Yeah. And then it, yeah. that, I guess, in turn increases that anxiety as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So it can turn into a bit of a vicious cycle um, because if you're not sleeping, you feel a bit grumpy. Um, and then also you might find you're a bit preoccupied with the fact you haven't slept. You start thinking about the next night and am I going to be able to sleep the next night? And all of those thoughts are quite unhelpful thoughts that might contribute towards you not sleeping. So it's important to sort of recognise when your thoughts are part of the problem of becoming a little bit unhelpful and just pointing out to yourself, well, I'm doing that thing when I worry about my sleep and it's not changing anything apart from it's making me feel worse and potentially it means that I'm, I might not sleep. So trying to then find something to distract yourself um, to to sort of put those thoughts away a little bit. So recognising that, that those are unhelpful and part of the problem. Also at the moment, people seem to be talking about having lots of dreams and actually nightmares. And definitely for me, that, that's the case. I seem, to, I seem to be dreaming a lot more and actually anxiety dreams. I had a dream last night that um, obviously I, I, you know, I have to be at the studio at a certain time. And I dreamt last night that I couldn't get there. The train I was on was the wrong train. Then, um, you know, I got in a taxi and they wouldn't drive me the right way. Then I looked down and didn't have any of my bags or my makeup or my clothes. And, you know, it's that that kind of... And I woke up in a, you know, in a, in a mess. Then, yes, you know, yeah. and, and then, you know, getting back to sleep after that was difficult as well. Is that something you're hearing? Yeah, I have heard a bit of that. I mean, I haven't heard that... Um with with my clients in fact surprisingly a lot of my clients are sleeping a little bit better or maybe I shouldn't say surprisingly because they're they're working to, yeah. to sleep so that's good that's that's working um but I would say that's just another response to the the uncertainty and stress and, and, and anxiety that's going around uh, with the situation with the coronavirus um so you tend to get um with with bad dreams and nightmares it tends to be triggered by stress um or anxiety um but it could also be sleep deprivation it can be sort of irregular bedtime so those things can sort of trigger um trigger that so any sleep deprivation um can make can make that worse if you're a little bit prone to those sorts of dreams and nightmares um it could also be it might be an underlying reason like substance use or medication um 
sometimes nightmares um, or regular nightmares are to do with an underlying sleep disorder, but that would be going on anyway. So if people are noticing an increase in um, bad dreams and nightmares around this time, it's very likely to be, like you say, sort of anxiety driven. And you shouldn't worry about that then. You should you should just kind of, when you, when you wake up from one of those dreams, you should just kind of put it aside and try to get back to sleep. Don't check your phone. <laughs> Yeah, so it's sort of same rules apply, but you might need to sort of, if you have woken up from a bad dream or a nightmare, you're going to feel a bit, a bit agitated and it might just take you a little bit of time to, to calm yourself down and wind down. But it doesn't mean anything, it doesn't mean you're going mad or anything, it just, you know, it just, just means you've had a bad dream and, and because of what's going on it makes sense that you, you're having more of these these disturbing dreams um if again if you worry about it it's going to make things worse because then you're going to feel more anxious and more prone to them um and so i would suggest in the night you know even um even if you need to sort of just getting out of bed going down going to another room that's comfortable keep the lights low and just do something relaxing to wind you down so repeat what you did um, before bedtime, whether that's reading or listening to music or, you know, mindfulness exercises or, or some deep breathing, any of that can be quite helpful. Um, and then just take yourself back to bed when you feel a bit calmer. Um, so, yeah, it's sort of same principles. Keep your sleep hygiene as, as good as possible and, and just think about the effect of worrying on that problem and how it might then propagate the problem. If anyone's watching this and they they are worried about their sleep, and is there are there places that they can go for help or or, or websites that you point people towards? Yeah. Um, so if people have short term sleep problems, and when I say short term, I mean it might be a couple of days, it might be a couple of weeks. Short term sleep problems could go on for a couple of months. They're considered short term, even though it feels not short term at all um, and those generally will pass you know about one in three people experience that including myself so in the last couple of weeks I have had some um, sleep disturbance um, but but they passed after sort of three or four days and that's entirely normal because because like we said we were adjusting to a lot and we're having to take a lot in um, and and there's, there's a fair amount of stress around so I would just say that if that's going on just the main thing is to not worry about it um, and to try and keep your routines and to keep that you know look into sleep hygiene advice so if you google sleep hygiene um, in fact you can look on NHS website for sleep hygiene or you can look on nice guidelines which are um, sort of medical guidelines that people use which are evidence-based so you can look up um, guidelines for short-term sleep problems which they consider under four weeks and it will give you a list of sleep hygiene advice which is which is some of those things I've said about watching out for alcohol watching out for caffeine try and keep your bedtimes um, fairly regular um, all sorts of advice out there making sure you exercise exercise is great for your sleep so trying to do that daily um, and so that that's what I'd say about those short-term sleep problems look at the sleep hygiene advice follow the sleep hygiene don't worry about it it will probably pass um, and particularly if you don't start trying to sort of overcompensate for it. So, um, you know, if you're not sleeping, you can't force yourself to sleep. So if you're waking up at five in the morning and you're not back to sleep within half an hour, just get up and just go downstairs and start your day or sit in your sitting room and, and read a book. Just get up because you just get frustrated trying to force yourself to sleep and you can't do that. Um, equally the same at night. If you feel like you're not ready for bed, you're not sleepy, you might be tired. If you're not sleepy, just wait until you are and go to bed when you're sleepy. Um, so that's for short-term sleep problems. And, and just remember, it generally will, will pass. Um, if it's gone on for more than a couple of months, so sort of three, you know, two, three months plus, then you, you might want to seek some, some advice and some help. And I'd suggest um, that the, the treatment with the best results is, is what I said, cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. Um, and there's lots of stuff out there actually online because obviously people can't can't uh, see people face to face. But there's lots of digital providers of, of CBTI, it's called. Um, cognitive behavioural therapy for insomnia. So I would suggest if you are, if you have been struggling to sleep for over a couple of months, then I would look into some form of CBTI. Okay, great. Well, Christabella, it's been so nice to speak to you. Thank you very much for your time. 
No problem.